5.3 Interpreting and Sketching Graphs. This is all about looking at the graph of information and finding the story out of it or vice versa, starting with a story and coming up with a graph that describes it. So here I've got a question that talks about the cost and masses of various bags of popcorn. We've got mass on the independent axis, the x-axis. We've got cost on the dependent axis, that's the y-axis. We've got several different bags of popcorn. Let's go through the questions. First one, which bag is the most expensive? Well, it's the one with the highest cost. Bag C is the highest up one on the cost axis, and that looks like it is setting at around $7. Bag C is the most expensive and it costs about $7. Okay, so next question. Which bag has the least mass? We look at the one that is the farthest in this direction on the, uh, the mass axis. And that is bag B. And its mass is about 500 grams. Remember we're going up, if you look at here, we're going up 200 grams per space, 200, 400, 600, it's halfway in between. So we're looking at about 500 grams. Question, which bags have the same mass? We're still talking about the mass axis. We're looking for two bags that have roughly the same mass. These two right here, they're both at the same mass on that graph. We are looking at bag D and bag E. That's got a mass of about 1800 grams. Next question asks, which bags cost the same? Okay, well, I'm looking on the cost axis, looking for two that line up. That would be these two right here. They go, both have a cost of $4. So my answers are bag A and bag E. And they both cost Four dollars. Now, for my last question, it asks, which uh, which of bags C or D has better value for money? Okay, so now we got to look at both things together. Let's take a look at bags A and bag E. Okay, if I look at that value for money, in both cases, they both cost four dollars. But when I look at bag A, it's only got about 900 grams. Look at that. But bag E is up here at 1800 grams. But it's getting the same price. Bag E, you're getting more popcorn. I'm going to say. Answer is bag E. You get more for less. More, less cost. Example number two is describing what's happening in a graph. So what is the story that goes behind with this picture? So we've got a day trip from Winnipeg to Winkler, Manitoba. They got a little note here on the side saying the distance between Winnipeg and Winkler is about 130 kilometers. So on this axis, on the x-axis, we've got time. So as time goes on, and on this distance, we've got distance. But that's distance from home. So I'm going to put a little note here. Distance from home. And in this case, home is... Uh, Winnipeg. So this. Okay, so let's look at each of our sections. 
we've got from O to A. That's the section right here. Now in that section, we're driving at a constant speed. Drive at a constant speed to Winkler. You'll notice and we, they went for one hour and traveled. If you look at this line right here, they traveled 60 kilometers. Okay. Next, if we move from A to B, now keep in mind they didn't get there yet because the entire distance is 130 kilometers. So if I look from A to B, time is moving forward, but the distance is not increasing. So it looks like they had about a 15 minute stop. Each space on here being half an hour, that's half of that. It appears that they had a 15 minute stop. They are not moving. So that is about a 15 minute stop. Okay. The next part is from B to C. And if you'll notice, the distance is now changing again along with time. That so must mean they're driving again. So from B to C, they continued traveling and looks like the rest of the way to Winkler. And they drove for about 45 minutes. All right. Next step, we're going to look at C to D. The distance is not changing, even though time goes on. Looks like they stayed at Winkler. So the distance from Winnipeg didn't change. And this looked like it was from two hours to four hours. So that is for two hours. They stayed in Winkler. And let's do our last section, which is D to E. And in that section, they drove home without stopping. You'll notice the speed keeps changing, or the distance keeps changing at a constant rate, which means their speed must be at a constant rate. Because it's straight, we're assuming a constant rate. And they did that for two hours, from four till six. And that, describing the journey for each section of the graph. Example three, sketching a graph for a given situation. So what I've got here is I've got a story describing what is happening. We're going to draw a graph that describes it. So Sam went on a bicycle ride. He accelerated until he reached a speed of 20 kilometers an hour. Then he cycled for 30 minutes at approximately 20 kilometers an hour. Samuel arrived at the bottom of the hill and his speed decreased to approximately 5 kilometers per hour or 10 minutes as he cycled up the hill. He stopped at the top of the hill for 10 minutes. 
So we are graphing this as speed as a function of time. So speed on the y-axis because it depends on time. The time is on the x, speed is on the y. Let's graph it and go through what each piece is. Let's start with that first acceleration. Sam starts at zero and works his way up to 20 kilometers an hour. Now we weren't told how fast he gets there, but we know that you can't instantly go from zero to 20 kilometers per hour. In the real world, it doesn't work that way. So what we've got here is from zero, 20, I'm gonna put in a, pro, a bit of an angle on it. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. So once he accelerates to 20 kilometers an hour, Sam goes for 30 minutes at a constant speed. So if the speed doesn't change, we're going to put a horizontal line. And it's going to last for a full 30 minutes. After that, he hits the bottom of the, of the hill and he slows down to, fifth, to five kilometers per hour. Same thing again. You can't slow down uh, immediately to zero. It is going to take you some time. We don't have any information, so we'll just do it close enough. Make sure it's on a bit of an angle. He continued up that hill at five kilometers an hour, so he's going at a constant speed for about 10 minutes. So we're going to go from here over here. And last, or sorry, not last, next, he slows down and stops at the top of the hill. Same thing again. You don't slow down instantly. When he gets to the top of the hill, he gets to zero. And then he waits at the bottom of the hill for 10 minutes. Sorry, waits at the top of the hill for 10 minutes. We get a speed of zero. Now that should be here. Speed of zero, so it'd be sitting right at zero. There's a description, this graph that describes exactly what's happening. If I go over it a little thicker and a thicker line, it looks like you're going up. And then you're going to go, or sorry, Sam accelerates. Then he goes at a constant speed for 30 minutes. That's why this doesn't change. Then he slows down to 5 kilometers an hour. Goes at a constant speed for another 10 minutes as he's climbing the hill. He gets to the top of the hill. He slows down and go and stops. He does not move. So the speed is zero. That's how you would draw a graph from written information.